OK, let's look at how to work out the electronic configuration for the elements in a periodic table. The IB says that you only need to go up to xenon, atomic number 54. So we're going to ignore this is the F block down here. Uh, although they have asked about that in the past, we keep emailing them and telling them not to. And I'm pretty sure they'll never talk about that again. All right then, so if I was to tell you that the final term in the electronic configuration for sodium is 3s1 and that for magnesium it's 3s2, then maybe you could work out that for potassium the final term is 4s1 and that would be 5s1 for rubidium and uh, let's say 6s2 for barium. So this is the S block here. Oh, don't forget helium over there. So what's the final term for helium? Well, that's going to be 1s1 and over here 1s2. Looking at the yellow ones, if I tell you the final term for aluminium is 3p1, and that's 3p2, 3p3, all the way on to 3p6 for argon. So maybe you can work out that the final term for iodine is moving along 5p5 5p5 for iodine. So which element has the final term of 3p6? 3 in the P block here, that will be argon. So these are known as the P block. The ones in the middle, there's some exceptions we'll look at a little bit later. But you would think if that's 4s1 here for the final term, 4p1 for gallium for the final term, that would be 4d1, and you'd be wrong, because the D block is uh, shifted by 1 from the pattern that we've been looking at. So the final term for scandium is 3d1. So it's 3d1, that would be 4d1, 5d1, and that would be 6d1. Notice it's out by 1 where you'd expect it to be. So over here, this, the final term for zinc is 3d10. What about osmium? Now don't be tempted to say 6d... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Don't be tempted to say 6d6. No. It's 5d6. The, number, the first number is out by 1. 3d6, 4d6, 5d6. Now there are some exceptions, which we'll look at in a bit. All right then, here's a quick quiz. Which element ends in 5s1? Rubidium. What's the final electronic term, electro, uh, final term in the electronic configuration for phosphorus? That's 3p3. Iodine. What's the final term there? We've done that one before. That's 5p5. Which element ends in 2p2? That's carbon. And which element ends in 2d1? That's silly. That one hasn't been discovered yet. But I'm working on it. So I'm going to try and pack a lot into the screen here. So it's going to be a little bit smaller than I'd like. But there you go. Let's start off with hydrogen. It's got one electron. And the electronic arrangement is one. And for helium, it's two. And for lithium, well, that has two shells. And that's two and one. Now, that's the SL version. In HL... The truth of the matter is that hydrogen has an electron configuration of 1s1. Helium is 1s2. And you might think for lithium it would then be 1s3, but you'd be wrong. Remember, uh, lithium doesn't end like that. So lithium is 1s2, 2s1. So there is a pattern here. If you look down group 1, you'll notice they end in 1s1, 2s1, 3s1, 4s1, 5s1, 6s1, and 7s1. And for group 2, well, beryllium has four electrons in a 2-2 electron arrangement. And that's 1s2, 2s2. And all the way down group 2, they end in s2. For boron, well, that has five electrons with a 2-3 electron arrangement. And that's 1s2, 2s2, 3s1. No, no, no. We're over in the p block on that side. So that's actually 2px1. The p orbital along the x-axis has one electron in it. So that's the s block there that I'm highlighting in purple. S and s, that little one there for helium. And over on the other side, well, that's the p block. The electron configurations end in p if the element is in that block. So carbon is 2 and 4. So 1s2, 2s2, it's 2px1. 2PY1, so 
for nitrogen, that has seven electrons, two, five. And just as you think you get the pattern, 2pz1, and you think, OK, you understand it, then it goes all funky again for oxygen with its eight electrons, 2, 6. Now the electrons start to pair up one by one as the orbitals fill up. Fluorine, 2 and 7. And again, the electrons start to pair up. The 2py now has two electrons. And the p's will be full when neon is completed here. 2px2, 2py2, 2pz2. Well, let's move on. Now, all that 2px, y, and z is very busy. So what you can do, almost always, is replace it with this kind of compressed version. 2p6 or 2p5. For oxygen, it's going to be 2p4. So the x, y, and z axis for the p orbitals, almost always you can just simplify it. All right, next bit. Now, the IB likes to see electrons in boxes, so let's use those boxes. The lower box is the 1s, and that's closest to the nucleus, that little white dot there, closest to the nucleus. And so hydrogen has one electron. Notice how the electrons are shown as kind of a, a barbed arrow. Now, the second electron, it, it doesn't work like that. Pauli's exclusion principle says that in one orbital or in one box, the electrons have to point in different directions. Now, lithium has three electrons. Pop the third one in there, and that's in the 2s. It's a higher energy level. And for beryllium, that electron, yes, I put it in upside down. That's correct this time. The Pauli exclusion principle is at work. Now, with 2p, x, y, and z, if you remember, it fills up x, y, z, and then flips over x, y, z. So carbons, now that's, that's wrong there. That electron's the wrong way around, and also... That doesn't fit with Hund's rule, which is that if the orbitals had the same energy, then the electrons will fill up singly one by one in those orbitals, and then they'll start to pair up until all the orbitals are full. Well, that's period one and two done. Now, don't worry too much about the name of the laws. The IB have never asked you to actually state them, but you need to be able to apply them. And this is where the SL kids are normally let go. We stop at calcium for the SL kids, 2882, and there's a very good reason for that. Because once you get to scandium, it all falls apart. All those rules that we've taught you for SL. So calcium is followed by scandium with 21 electrons. So scandium is actually 2892, and that freaks out the SL kids because surely it should be 2883. No, nope, I'm sorry, Mother Nature has called that nine to be there. Now, I'm tired of writing this all out in longhand, so you know what? That's argon. The electron configuration of the noble gases can be put in square brackets, and that will replace large parts of the electron configuration. So scandium is argon 4s2 3d1. Now, remember the d's are out by one. Just tidy up a bit more. All right, what's next is titanium. No, that's 2892. That's just, forget about that. So titanium has 3d2, and again, Hund's law says I've got to put one electron in each orbital. It's the same energy. Next is vanadium, and I'll just stick a 3 there and add another electron. And you can pretty much see where this is going to go. Electrons going one by one, then they flip over to follow Pauli's rule, which is every orbital or every box has to have an electron going up and down if it has two electrons in it. And that leaves me with zinc as argon, 4s2, 3d10. And you might think, again, that that's all she wrote. But there's some tricky ones. Finished? Not quite. Stop at xenon, they say. Well, occasionally they've wandered past xenon into the F block but I'm not going to go there today. I'm assuming they're going to be true to their word and stop at xenon. All right, chromium is one of the ones in the syllabus 
that they want you to know because it's a little strange. That's Chromium as I've taught it to you. 4S2, 3D4. I think the guy next door started a vacuum. That's not true. The vacuuming's true, but that's the wrong electron configuration. Allow me to uh, draw the boxes out, these orbitals, and fill it all in and reveal to you the truth. The truth is, is that orbitals are stable if they're empty, full, or half full. So empty, full, or half full are preferred configurations by atoms. Man, he's really going at it. Maybe I should pause for a bit. Oh, Mr. Thornley hates a vacuum. Oh, he's finished, though. All right, so we're uh, totting those in. And this is wrong. We need to fix this. So the 3D4, one, two, three, four. Now, since a half full orbital is stable, what happens is that 4S electron goes over to that 3D. So now the 4S is half full. Well, well it's always going to be stable. S is always half full, full or empty. But now the 3D, well, that's half full and that's stable. So that's the preferred electron configuration because everything's either full, empty, or half full. Now looking at copper, which is the next one, uh, the other one specifically mentioned in the syllabus, copper 29. So according to what I've taught you, it should be 4S2, 3D9. And maybe you can see that, once again, that 4S electron, if it moves over, excellent. Now the 3D is full, stable, and so copper has a, a 4S1, 3D10. So see if you can find mistakes in these. Mm, looking at the first one, that 3S2, that's wrong, isn't it? After 2S2 comes the 2P. And the second one, you can't have 3P3. The P orbital has to be full before moving on to the 4S. That's the Aufbau principle. Start at the lower ones, move up to the higher ones. 4D10, nope, should be 3D10. You've forgotten that the Ds are out by one there. 4D12, nope. Ds can only hold 10 as a maximum. 12 too many. And 3S3, S can only hold 2 as a maximum. Alrighty, let's carry on. Just look at a few odds and ends. This is a quick reminder. So the big numbers there, well, we're going to call those the principal levels or the principal energy levels. And to anyone normal, those are really just the shells. So let me just unpack that a tad. So it's pretty straightforward how to turn the HL into the SL. Just look at the pattern there. Oh, come on, Thorny. I thought this was supposed to be fun. Where are the zombies? Where's Dr. Atkinson? All right, just a quick look at ions. So sodium has that configuration. And the sodium plus ion, we're gonna, I'm going to lose that outer electron there, the 3S1. So the 3S1 has disappeared to make the sodium ion. And this is all getting too long-winded. So I'm going to look at the closest noble gas configuration that's going to work here. So in that case, it's neon and neon. I can erase that and replace it with neon. Selenium, wow, that's a long one. And again, I don't want to be writing all that out again. So in that circle there, that's the equivalent of argon. So I'm going to remove those. I can just put argon in. That's called the shorthand or the shortened electron configuration. And selenium, 2 minus, that means I'm going to have to add another couple of electrons onto that 4P. And now it's going to look just like krypton. Oh my God, that went on, didn't it?